Are we live? Thank you, Jasmine. We are here in the Solari kitchen. We're very excited to do this Solari Live cooking class because we're doing it with a classic Italian dish called spaghetti alla norma, or pasta alla norma, but today we're using spaghetti. This is a dish that's famous all throughout Italy, but I believe the origins are in Sicily. Why Sicily? Because as you may know, Sicily loves eggplants. They produce some of the best eggplants in the world. This dish features eggplants. Okay, let's dive into it. As you can see in the back, Chef Filippo was just there getting everything all ready. He's just grabbing something from our walk-in refrigerator. He'll be right back to get the class started. But a couple of quick housekeeping notes. I know many of you have gotten the kit. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, for each of our Solari Live cooking classes, you can come by two or three days ahead of time, or even the morning of the class, and you can pick up a kit. It's a really beautifully packaged um, container with everything you need ingredient-wise to follow along with what Chef Filippo is going to do. Kind of like painting by numbers. So we're going to go through the kit now to make sure you have everything while Chef does the final prep. Okay, if everybody has their sheets out, you should have, and he's going to go through it quickly, but you should have your spaghetti, the ricotta, the melanzana, the eggplant, everything all ready. If you want to zoom in there, uh, Jasmine, those are the, all of those items come in your kit. Remember, you can get a kit for $39 that has everything here you can see. And then when you're done, you have this dish for four people. So when we're done with this class, not only do you have fun, not only did you learn what Chef Filippo is doing, but you have a delicious spaghetti alla norma for four people for lunch. It's a great deal. And then here are the items you need to make sure you have ready. You should have some rags, um, you know, clean white rags or paper towels. Make sure you have the pot to fry the eggplant, very important. You want to have the pot for the pasta. You want to have a cutting board ready. You want to have a kitchen scale if you can. If not, Chef Filippo will show you how to measure it out. And you want to have a cheese grater. So if for some reason you don't have any of these items available right now, take a moment and find them. It'll all be fine. And as you know, these classes are also placed on YouTube. So you'll be all set to be able to go back and review what was on the class. Okay, I think we're pretty much all set. Ciao, Chef Filippo. Ciao, buongiorno. Why don't you spend a quick moment um, showing everybody what's in the kit that they get. So, here, the The burrata, which is the only thing that is not part of the original recipe, that's the final twist. Pull it out from the fridge because we want it room temperature once we're done with everything. So in your kit you have basil, a little branch of basil, and we have some Roma tomato. We call it San Marzano in Italy. That's the best tomato in season, but I also include some grape tomato, cherry tomato. Very nice, they look gorgeous. And that's a kind of a little twist. We mix two different kind of tomato to enhance the flavor nice. of our recipe. And take this apart. And the eggplant, of course. Look at these beautiful, tender, organic eggplants. We pick those eggplant because they're sweeter than the usual. But if you didn't bought the kit, you can use the regular eggplant. I show you how to make it sweet. And then we have our ricotta salata, which is the cheese. That usually we put parmesan cheese or grana padano in our pasta, but that's uh, the cheese for this recipe. Okay. Why is that the cheese for this recipe? Why did you make a change? I didn't make a change. That's oh, your This is the recipe. Okay, got it. I'm yes. just asking the questions. So everybody now, for your kits, you should kind of have it laid out like Chef Filippo has it. Again, we're not going to try to go too fast. So take a moment, get it laid out so you have it all organized. Uh, for those of you, again, that haven't gotten a kit, you get all of this for the $39. Plus, he's going to go through this as well, plus the instructions. And you'll have a meal, or not a meal, but you'll have the pasta alla norma for four persons when we're done. We finished with the fresh ingredient, that is the, the thing you add in the fridge. Now, 
take a look of the dry ingredient, which is the Sicilian rock salt. Nice. For our water and for our eggplant. We have some frying oil, so let's start. So maybe pause for a minute, Chef, before you do anything else. For those with kits, what should they have at home going? They should have their water being boiled. Yeah, so the so water, you started that. Let's start the fire underneath. Yep. Now they probably don't have a pot this big, so about how much water should they be doing for okay. four persons? Doesn't really matter. We are cooking spaghetti, so just yeah. if you find a tall one that can hold yep. the spaghetti at least this high, and one gallon of water is more than enough. So if they have a simple five quart, six quart pan, they're fine. Yes. Okay, great. So so number one, they should have their water boiling. What else should they have ready before they do anything else? Take the oil. Yep. And pour the oil on your pot. So again, just a small, simple pot. Probably everybody has at you home. You can use a pan. Or a pan. Or if you don't have a dough pot. I found this small one, which is perfect. Nice. So you pour all of the oil in, great. The frying oil, save the olive oil mm -hmm. for the recipe. You have two big oil and one small. The one small is gold. That's yep. our extra virgin olive oil. From so the Portugal. extra virgin olive oil there. Just, you know, in the kit, everything is all marked for you, so you don't need to worry. So you just put in a little more oil. Yeah. Yep. So you want to have oil all the way to the top. Got it. That's actually a lot of oil. That's a lot of oil. We use it again, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing great. Chef Philippe, over the course of this class, is also going to talk about all the things he does for sustainability. You'll see that, um, you know, besides like plastic items or something, he really reuses everything. We always have a stock going. Oh, let me show you guys something really quick. Look at this amazing bolognese that Maria and Chef Filippo were making right now. It smells so good in here. Absolutely amazing. Anyways, back to the class. Okay, Chef, so they have their oil being heated. They have their water being heated. So let's start with some pouring tea. Grab a knife. Okay. And we start slicing all our ingredients. The first is the eggplant, of course. Okay. Any special technique to the slicing? Yeah, look. We take out a little slice on the bottom, which is mostly skin. So you can fret and you don't risk to yep. the eggplant to move, then it will. Here you can choose your style. Let's say I go this way, but you can also go with the end of a diamond yeah. style. Doesn't really matter, we're gonna make cube out of it. So as far as you can have a slice yeah. okay. thick. But the end result is gonna be a cube. Yes. Okay. Can start either way. Love the freshness of these tomatoes too, especially this time of year. That's great. And now, tomato really start to be yeah good. I have several good friends um, that bring me uh, great tomatoes. The best are good friends of mine, Bob and Evelyn. That they just grow the best garden tomatoes, and I just can't wait till that season happens. It's looking good. Our eggplant. So if you have just a simple um, cookie tray. Now, Chef, if they don't have one of these uh, cool pieces of paper, do they put down just some, yeah, I don't know, olive oil? Or what would they put down? Anything? Nothing. Nothing. Just, just lay it on the pan. Yeah, lay it on the pan. Okay. And if they do that, they're not going to have a big mess to clean up later? No. Just water from the eggplant. So there was a question on the name of the vegetables. It's just um, simply the eggplant, the tomatoes, the garlic, and that's about it, right? Yeah, that's a very simple recipe. And those are the 
the delicious one if you yeah. share the passion we we have for food the italian italian food on the simple old recipe you find so so much taste and pure pure taste yeah. actually you really can enjoy the three four ingredients that compose the dish very nice i love the artwork artwork with melanzana the eggplant and I see our friends from Sierra Norte Whiskey have joined. Um, if you like having our craft cocktails here at Solare, one of the um, great cocktails we have, our Oaxacan Senora, Senore, is based on the Sierra Norte Whiskey. It's delicious. And as you may or may not know, corn is actually indigenous to Mexico and that region of Mexico. And these guys make their delicious whiskeys with heirloom corns. So next time you're at Solari, ask to try some of the Sierra Norte whiskey. It's really quite good. So right now everybody's oil should be getting warm. Their water should be getting warm. If you're lucky like I am, you have somebody cooking a huge pot of bolognese behind you because I'm just saying it smells great. Good. Because they're sweeter. And actually, what I'm doing now is not really needed. Just put some salt. This is the uh, Sicilian sea salt, correct? Yes. Some salt on the eggplant, and you flip it. And the reality is, from my experience, Chef, you tell me if I'm wrong. If you um, use this, you get high quality Sicilian sea salt, for example, you know, the amount you put on is not really a lot of salt. No, uh, then we're going to wash it out. Yeah. But it's when you use the really, really fine grain salt that is when it becomes overpowering. Yes. Yeah, one of the salts that Chef Filippo really likes is the uh, the Maldon salt. Actually from England. Interesting. <laughs> Let's take the good where it comes from. Salt so is perfect to season the meat usually because it's this flaky consistency. Thank you. So, here we are. We do this to take out some sulfur from the eggplant. If you have the, the black eggplant, yep. you need them both the kids, those are bitter and you really need this step. Yeah. And you have to let it rest for at least 30 40 minutes. We're gonna short the time with this eggplant because, as I said, those are very sweet. Yeah, so at this point, you have to know how much water you you use. If you add a gallon or so, uh, we're gonna put five to seven grams per liter of salt in our water. Got so, it. One gallon is about four liter. You want to put 20 to 25 gram on your pot. I see. Two gallons, so kind of like that. Then open up your olive oil. This is the really high quality, great olive oil you get, right? Yep, that's the corto. So hopefully everybody's water is kind of like this, not boiling yet, beginning to simmer. 
And that oil is looking pretty hot too, so. You have a lot of garlic. We're not gonna eat this garlic. Uh, if you follow us in this kitchen, yep. we use a little trick. Yep. We crush the garlic. And we infuse the oil. Then we're gonna take it out. So chef, um, so chef Jan has said hi. She goes, my favorite place Hello. in San Diego, my favorite chef. And chef Jan knows a lot of chefs, so thank you. That's very, very, very appreciated, wonderful words. Thank you. And so glad you could join us for our class on pasta alla norma with spaghetti. Heat up a little bit the olive oil. Olive oil never should go too hot. We heat it up. Just enough to season with the oil. How do you make sure you're not getting it too hot? If you have a thermometer, you can measure it uh, 160, but you can actually. Yeah. yeah. This simmering is good. Yeah. We don't want the oil to smoke. Yeah, exactly. That's why we don't use olive oil for frying, because we need higher temperature. Yeah. Take care of our tomato. Here, I show you how to make an incision and take out the skin. But for this recipe, actually, I want to go with the skin because there's a little bit of tannin that I love. It's kind of another layer of flavor. So for this time, we're not going to peel our tomato. How do you know? I mean, how do you use a gut feel? When do you want the skin and the tannins and when don't you? Depends on the recipe, of course. But yeah. with Norma, there is not, as you say, not that much ingredient. So we want to more build a little bit more layer. Okay. Now. That garlic really smells great. Looking forward to these tomatoes being all in place. Actually, save this toasted garlic. Yeah. But you can do some fancy and creative thing, like we do a puree. Yeah. Yeah, save, definitely save the garlic for sure. And just so everybody knows, we are open for lunch on Saturdays and Sundays. It's a beautiful day. Take a look at my uh, Instagram or Facebook. You'll see the beautiful red tables with yellow umbrellas. Come join us for lunch. We're uh, offering the spaghetti alla norma made by chef filippo all weekend so after you're done watching this grab your wife grab your husband grab your favorite pet jump in the car and come join us at solari it's really a nice day we'll hook you up with a great great glass of wine too or a cocktail i saw seth arrived about five minutes ago he gets here around 11 o'clock in the morning on today but we'll take great care of you and then also, speaking of um, having a nice glass of wine, this is the, um, the wine that Chef and I recommend for the um, Spaghetti Alla Norma. It's a Tuscan wine. This is a Vermentino. So Vermentino is actually the name of the varietal. And um, Vermentino, uh, researchers say, originated in Sardinia. So the island of Sardinia. But it's also grows beautifully in uh, Tuscany. So it's one of the great Tuscan white wines. Tuscany is really mostly known for their red wines, their Sangiovese, their Super Tuscans, um, but they also do great white wines. And they're, the one indigenous varietal is Vernaccia, um, but, uh, but Vermentino grows great too. And that's what we're drinking, is a Tuscan Vermentino. I'm gonna pour some here for Chef because He's just working like a dog. That looks really beautiful, by the way. So you just slice the cherry tomatoes. And yes, last thing I... And this is, the, this is the same olive oil you have the garlic in, right? Yes. So it's already flavored. Yep. Now I'm doing something that you can do it, but you don't need to for the recipe. We want to do it. I'm just doing a garnish. Okay. So 
with the oil out of the flame, you put your cherry tomato yeah. face down. Okay. And we toss a little bit, we're gonna use it on top of our pasta as a decoration with the basil. Nice. Remember with that garlic, he's all he did was uh, flavor the oil. Now he's gonna, he recommended, save those toasted garlic uh, cloves. But, uh, but for right now at least, and it smells great, is those little cherry tomatoes are just getting infused with garlic. It's just so good. Well, we'd love to take care of you with lunch today. I'm going to be here. Turn you on to some great wines, spaghetti alla dorba, much, much more. Save these little guys. This is the garnish, right? Yeah. So if you have a pan, just save them off to one side. I think it's okay if they get a little bit on the colder side, no problem. And just you know, Filippo, your friend Claudia Napoli is saying hi to you. That's my cousin. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And she's in Tuscany right now? She's in Lazio right now. Oh, in she Lazio, in Viterbo, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think so, so. Claudia, you'll have to tell us what's going on there in Lazio. What's the weather like? It's probably snowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining because remember, everybody, it's nine hours time difference. So if it is snowing, it's snowing at 824 at night, which means it's probably cold. I keep going. I think all yep. the tomatoes in the cube. That's nice. a rough sauce. As I say, we want to keep it kind of rustic, even on the skin. Yes. If you don't like the skin, I remind you how to do the peeling tomato. You just make an incision, a cross incision. You toss mm -hmm. in the water for 45 seconds, and then cold water right away. Got the it. peel comes out, and you can finish slicing later. Got it. And we use actually those skin that we take out, we fry and we use as a pressure. Oh, we oh no, they're delicious. It's like eating a super healthy potato chip. No, we can do one just to demonstrate. Yeah. And I do have a glass of the Tuscan Vermentino from San Felice. So here's what he does. So you put a little crisscross on the top, right? Otherwise, it'll start bubbling off. Crisscross on the top and throw that tomato in the boiling water. And how long are you going to leave it in there for, Chef? Uh, 45 seconds, which I'm counting on my head. Very good. Yeah. It's not that precise. If it's 47, it's okay, of course. But not 48. with our cherry, yep. split in half, and now it's time to turn on the sauce. And now I like to add a little, let's say, half of the basil now, okay. and I leave the stem. So it's easy to take it out later. All right, so the, again, the basil will be primarily for flavoring. Yep. Okay. Cool. Boy, I can smell the basil. As I say, we're building layer here. Nice. And we we have the garlic, yeah. we have the tomato, the acidity from the tomato, the tannins from the skin. Okay, we got it there. There we go. I think it was longer than 45 or 48 I seconds, think. but we'll survive. Right. So now, cold water, you cannot follow me, but... So just put some cold water over it if you're doing this at home. Melody, I know you and I spoke as one of the people this morning. I hope everything's going well for you. Okay. One thing that Mel... Oh! Wow. Okay, that's shooting um, hot oil all over the place. Just everybody knows, this is a dangerous job I have. I feel that part too much? Just a little bit, maybe. Okay, so you have a so those are just the, um, all that is is the skin of the uh, tomato, as you saw. There we go. Do not try this at home. No. 
peak the right. Uh, yep, a little bit too small of a pot. Those are crunchy. Yeah, these are, you would be really surprised just how good these little guys are. All it is is the tomato skin, just fried a little bit. It's, it's just a fun thing to do. So if you're, yeah, there it is with no skin, yep. But if you're entertaining at home or even just for you and your partner, you do the little tomato skin thing and you hand it to your partner with a glass of wine. Um, I'm just saying, it's a good thing. Tomato chips. Tomato chips. It's just fun. It's unexpected. It's simple. It's, you know, that might be the number one thing you talk about after the meal. It's that fun little thing you did. Now, if you low, it is. Our tomato wow. is melting in this pot. It's very nice. Now, we encourage everybody to always cook with wine, cook with Italian wine. That means also having some wine. So, Chef, if you do have 15 seconds to take a short break, you should enjoy some of this Vermentino. Salute, everyone. San Felice, one of my favorite wineries in Tuscany. Actually, not far at all from where Chef Filippo grew up. Leonardo. Yep. Leonardo Bellicini is the winemaker there. He's been there for over 35 years. He's a great guy. He's one of my friends. I know. He's actually been here at Solari several times leading wine dinners. We always have a lot of San Felice wines. They have a really great Brunello called Campo Giovanni. They have the Vermentino we're drinking. They have a great Chianti. I'm there. That's what you want to do with the spaghetti. It's a little more, it's spread right away, so you don't have to keep stirring and have the spaghetti. Great technique. Now, let's get our eggplant back. And as I said, those eggplants doesn't really but you can yep. see that they took out some water. Hold it, yeah, hold it steady for a moment. Yep, got it. Thank you. So now I will wash all of them. You can. So what are you doing now? You're going to wash the eggplant? Just wash the eggplant from the salt. Okay. And we're going to slice. So the salt he put on, as he said before, he's washing away. We, you should have, everybody with the kit at home, you should have your pasta in the boiling water. You still have your oil that's heated. You should have your tomatoes cut in half you're using as a garnish. You have your tomato skins if you went for the extra credit. You have your tomatoes with the basil still simmering away. You put your eggplant. You have your glass of washed. white wine almost gone. We put the eggplant on a towel or yep. some paper. Like so just know simple paper. paper towels will work. Yeah. But if anybody does want any of this fancy stuff that Chef Filippo has, if you just come by, we can hook you up with all this stuff. And then, you know, it's nice. It fits right on the cookie trays, etc. But simple paper towels are just as good. I am looking forward to this dish. I know we're getting close. Again, for those of you with kits, in by about 15, 20 minutes at the most, you'll be sitting down with a delicious spaghetti alla norma that you made yourself. Good, yours should be kind of looking like that. Okay. I want to point out, see the water that come yep. out from the eggplant? Oh, wow. That's a bitter, the bitter part of the eggplant that we basically take it out with the salt. Oh, so that all happened because of the salt, Chef? Yeah. Oh, okay, smart. So everybody keep that technique in mind. Mm. I just had some of the... Um, San Felice Vermentino, really good. Repeat with all the eggplants, wash it out. Of you can see he washed salt. it, put it in the strainer, got rid of the bitter side of it that the salt helped with. You have your pasta getting ready, you have your tomato sauce. One thing about this dish that I love, and Chef Filippo touched on it briefly, it's just, it's just so fresh. I mean, all you have is the 
artisanal uh, spaghetti that we provided you. Absolutely um, fresh, not in a can, tomatoes with basil. You have the garlic that we infused into the olive oil. Um, and we're going to have this really high quality organic um, eggplant. In Italian, remember melanzana is the eggplant. Eggplant is just huge in Sicily. I've set up uh, three tours there, and uh, absolutely everywhere you go on the island, there's eggplant. I mean, there's eggplant everywhere in Italy, but boy, in Sicily, they go crazy. By this time, your... Okay. Your sauce should look like dry. Okay. And you might think that's not good, but we put our sauce, and we finish the sauce. So we take the sauce from our yep. pot, Ooh. Excellent. We give time to our tomato. Mm -hmm. So you still have that on, just everybody knows, he has that on a high heat. That is a high heat uh, going on right actually, there. Nope. It looks high through. to me. <laughs> At least in my kitchen and my house, that is so hot. Now if you ate the skin from the cherry tomato, it's uh -huh. time to check the pot and patiently. I like it, so as I said, I want these salts made with the, okay. with the skin, so I'll leave it there. So if you didn't hear them, if having the tomato skin bugs you, which that's okay, now's the time to take it out. You wanna get these cool little tweezers like Filippo has, we can get those for you also. Um, but I'm with him, leave the skins in. Or you can even, uh, how you call the, Grind it up? Yeah, the oh. strainer. A strainer, yeah, you don't want to do that. I vote no on the strainer. If you got to get rid of them, just oh, use these cool you, tongs. You keep the, the skin yeah. uh, flavor, but you don't have the actual skin under your feet. So our pasta is five minutes away. Five so. minutes away and counting. It's like the Mars landing a couple of days ago. We're now in the atmosphere. Now, we have to finish no okie dokie. And fry them. Now's a good time for everybody to take a little break, have a little bit of a uh, nice wine. If you happen to have Vermentino, go for it. Otherwise, anything you can pour in your glass is probably appropriate. So remember, he said he was basically just going to kind of cube it up. That's what he's doing. It doesn't matter what style. You start with, we want to keep a little bit of skin, but they have a piece yep. that is pretty clean. Wonderful. Boy, it just smells so good. I hope everybody's kitchen smells just as good. If you didn't get a kit this time, do so for next week. Remember, next week we're doing carbonara. Carbonara. Um, and you can get your kit pretty much any time after Wednesday. Just let us know. Uh, we'll be doing it again at 11 a.m. on Saturday. But it'll be carbonara, which is kind of in the heart of Tuscany. And Lazio, where Claudia is. Know about is she going to say you make it correct or incorrect? I, she's a good cook, so she's probably going to say that I'm correct. <laughs> yeah, I guess we, she will say that it is correct. his family. Yeah. <laughs> so is she first cousin, second cousin? Yeah, first cousin. So she's the daughter of your mom's brother? Brother. Or? Okay. Yeah. She has a brother, Alessandro, Chao. You might she, want to watch later. She must be very proud of you. 
working at the best Italian restaurant in the entire United States, Solare Ristorante. We're very objective. You got your melanzana ready, a few more cherry tomatoes. You can really see how these tomatoes have transformed and Filippo adding a little bit more water made a big, um, the water from the pasta made a big difference. That's the point to fry. Our oil should be hey, chef. hot. Hey, if I was watching at home, I'd be wondering, how long am I leaving my pasta in there? Till it's good. Which how do you know when it's good? First thing we put it together, so I'll tell you. Okay. But now it's about time to turn off the water. Yeah. You saw me do this before. But so we give time. Yeah. But how do we they know? Time what what is the technique to know? Very al dente. Yeah. Still has a little white inside. Yeah. So we are like two minutes away, turning off the heat. We gain some time and we go to four to six minutes. Okay. But the better way is actually this. You just try yourself. That's still hard as I said. Yeah. Is it good? So is perfect. What if you find out you cooked it too much? How do you make it go back in time? You... Actually, <laughs> that's hard. Uh, you can do something with overcooked pasta. There is many recipes. Yeah. I will show you. We should have a whole class on overcooked just pasta. Just so you know, this, if you have no problem with allergy, with yeah. tomato and everything, you can add it to your garlic sauce Yeah. as well. We still have some basic fresh. now. Let's go ahead, fry one eggplant. Our oil should be, yes. So don't put all the eggplant at once. That's a... That would be a rookie mistake. The oil, it gets, of course, every time you insert something in the pot. It takes the heat away? Yes. So find the right proportion with eating and timing of inserting your eggplant, and then... Your good friend, uh, Mr. Chris, says it's four delays of time. I agree, you need to bring some here for Chef Filippo and I. Well, our sauce is really good looking now. It smells great. I know I keep saying that, but I'm only doing that because it smells great. I add a little bit of olive oil now. Mm -hmm. We have and great we'll, olive oil here if you ever need any. I will add more while we take out the okay. the pasta. And we're all done here. You and I are going to have some spaghetti alla norma, right? Definitely, yes. So I want to show you at least for the first batch. You have to make it kind of crunchy, crispy on the brown side. Okay. If the oil is on the right temperature, which is bubbling like this, it's not burning, but the eggplant is not taking any oil inside. Yep. And it stays crunchy, basically sealed instantly when you put in the, in the oil. I like it. Yeah, it's really getting toasty brown. I'll be honest with you, I like it on the crispier side too. And I love eggplant. But having them cut at that size um, of sort of like uh, three dimensional rectangles, um, they're the perfect size. They just get nice and crispy. Ooh, looking good. Looking good. So again, for those of you with kits, I hope you and your friends are ready for a feast. Somebody besides you is getting the wine ready, table set, hopefully you have a nice salad, maybe a dessert for later. For those of you that were making hungry, which I assume is everybody, come to Solare. Remember, Saturday and Sundays, we open at noon. We have tables on our lawn. We have tables on our heated patios. You can do a picnic in our beautiful Liberty Station Park. So you're turning down the heat a little bit? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just keeping an eye on you. The thing is, what you have to do at a certain point, just try the salt and see if you want more salt. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have a question, um, Filippo. Um, Chris has asked, what other pasta recommendations would you recommend? So in this case, we're using spaghetti, a great artisanal spaghetti. What else would you do? Yeah, I like spaghetti with the norma, but actually it is born with a, a pasta that has this kind of shape. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you have mezze maniche, cannoliki, or uh, I don't know, any format that has this length, pasta corta, Okay, pasta corta, and you said mezze manica. Yep. If anybody um, wants us to email them the names of those pastas, Actually, we have, just send us an email. We have Maria here. Just Maria, what's the perfect pasta for Norma? The, the one from Trapani. Yeah, this is una pasta siciliana. What is the name? Pasta con le melanzane. La pasta, come si chiama? La pasta che facciamo, gli spaghetti facciamo. E i rigatoni? I rigatoni e le fusilli? I fusilli sono perfetti per questa pasta. Numero uno fusilli. Sta un ristorante a Palermo in Sicilia che è specializzato per i fusilli alla norma. No, con le melanzane, cresce il basilico e salsa di pomodoro. So, Fusili. Yeah, Fusili. Thank you, Maria. Fusili is supposed to be twisted pasta, you yeah. know? And I think she likes the Fusili because of the lots of surface area on the pasta to really absorb all this great tomato, the melanzana that will be there soon, and everything. So, four. So, everybody, I think we're getting close. Television purpose, we have to rush a little bit. Pasta is ready. Then we Fabulous. Have Ten minutes before our connection. Go. So let's add the eggplant. Very nice. That's kind of a ragu of eggplant. Some we put it inside. Some we will toss yep. at the very last minute. Hey chef, I got a question for you from Sandra. Yep. She says, she's not a huge fan of eggplant, and there are a lot of people that are not. What other options are out there? Like, for example, if she just simply substituted the eggplant with zucchini. Oh yeah, definitely. That's actually a great vegetarian pasta. We can, the, the, just the tomato itself is, yeah. a, is a fantastic sauce. Yeah. So whatever you like with tomato, you can add it to it. So zucchini's a go. I assume squash is a go. Yep. Let me drain the pasta. I'm hungry. Now, I think a lot of people might assume just looking at this dish that it would be, um, you drink a red wine with this. But keep in mind, probably the recommendation here would be a white wine, like the Vermentino, like a Pinot Grigio, like a Vernaccia. Or if you're in the beautiful region of Marche, just east of Tuscany, you have a great uh, Verdicchio, Verdicchio. These are all great, great, great uh, white wines to have with a dish like this. There we go. I'm on board. Sign me up. Again, everybody with their kits, you're in the end stretch here. Hopefully everybody around you is helping set up the table. You just have a wonderful, healthy, not gonna slow you down uh, main course. There we go. This is for Chef Filippo and me. That's for the crew. And the crew, I guess. Yeah, right now we have Seth here, we have Jasmine, Maria, me. Remember also that we have um, the Solari Wine Market is open every day. Yeah, we have a great retail wine market. Saturday and Sundays, we open at noon. Come check out our wine selection. 
And we're open seven days a week. Weekdays we open at three. It actually is a great selection. We have wines at every price point. We focus on only Italy and uh, West Coast North America, meaning Washington State, Oregon State, California, and Baja. That's it. Don't come here for wines from anywhere other than Italy or West Coast North America. Thank you, Rose. We think it does look beautiful. Now it's time to plate. We are plating. We are smelling great dishes. For all of you that got kits, I hope this has been working out great for you. Save the nicer leaf. So, yep, he's, and every dish. yep, always pick the best of the bay leaves, or the basil, sorry, that you want to put on top of the dish. And chop the other one roughly with the end. Don't put on the basil till the very end. The basil at the very start, then you take it out, yep. and at the very end, so we have the, the stracotto yeah. and the French on top. What does stracotto mean? Overcooked. Ah. The, the basil leaves a different aroma if you cook. Very nice. For a long time, it's basically macerating on the, on the sauce. What we do with our pizza sauce actually. It's oh, okay. Living there for three days and that makes the difference on the flavor. I'm just telling you that looks great. Manja manja for ooh if you are watching this and you did not get a kit, you can always still get a kit for the Spaghetti Alla Norma and watch this on YouTube again. Or definitely get a kit for the Carbonara we're doing this weekend. I promise, we got the salata. You have a lot, so put as much as you wanted on the pasta and enjoy the rest. Yeah, that is awesome. On the table. Yeah, because on this particular day, we decided to have a twist. Yeah, and our twist yeah is this there. is the twist that's coming. You should watch this. And Bobbert's Girl, thanks for your note. And yeah, you got to come by and try the dish made by uh, Chef Filippo. But Filippo, now tell us what you're doing, because everybody that got a kit also has this, which is what? What is in this milky container? Yes. The burrata. The burrata. So we did a kind of a Naples twist. So you can see that he has the cheese on top. But with the Naples twist, he's now going to be adding some burrata. Look at that. I love the presentation. As you see, the simple the ingredients are so simple. Pasta, tomatoes, garlic infusion, basil. The cheese, period. And now we're just going to add a little bit of um, burrata. You see he has his crispy tomato skin on top. There's another one. That makes a little nest. That is just, that's just beautiful. To come. And as I said, a little bit of olive oil on top. Careful, not too much. Not too much. There you go. Nice. But that burrata cheese on top for the uh, spaghetti alla norma purists out there, you're like, stop, no burrata. But the burrata is amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, is that one mine? Yes. Can I call it? Anyways, everybody just take a look at it for a moment. You've watched this creation in action. We have a bed of artisanal spaghetti. Look at the melanzana. We have the fried tomato skins. That burrata cheese, you want to have the dish just simply for that burrata cheese. We have a great source of some of the best burrata you're ever going to have. Really, really amazing dish. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you to our friend of Sonia Toscano yeah. for providing these so, amazing. Filippo, we're going to let everybody get to enjoying their food. Come visit us here at Solari for lunch. Is there um, any final words you want to share from the chef at Solari? 
Come and join us next week with Carbonara. We just started back doing this class. We love doing what we do and we love you to share with us uh, your passion. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Ciao, we're gonna run away.